partial factor of safety for the actions for the ultimate limit state which is meant for the safety of the people and also safety of the structure these are the partial factor of safety for the permanent actions and also variable actions which is defined by different design situations the first case is for checking of the static equilibrium of a building structure the second case is for the design or structural member which do not consider the geotechnical actions and the third case is an alternative to the A and B here which you do not need to check the situations individually if you only wish to design both situations in one set of calculations you may use the factor of safety given here on this note if you do not know which to be used you can always choose for the design situation C within the actions there are favorable and unfavorable conditions the favorable conditions means that the action is actually decreasing the loads acting on the structure while the unfavorable conditions actually increase the load acting on the structure and encourage the structures to fail as in the structures there could be combinations of favorable and unfavorable actions the two actions may cancel out each other and the outcome of the analysis is unable to grab the most critical situations for a more critical situations of the analysis we will need to amplify the effects of the unfavorable actions and reduce the effect of the favorable actions this is so that the structure is at the most critical situations as the permanent actions is more easily predictable than the variable actions the factor of safety for the permanent actions are normally smaller than the variable actions and due to the nature of the variable actions which can be there can be not there the most critical situations is when the variable actions which is favorable is not there therefore the factor of safety will be set as zero in the variable actions there are leading and accompanying variable actions the leading variable actions is the predominant variable actions acting on the structures and the accompanying variable actions is the secondary variable actions which acting on the structure among a group of variable actions which is more than one you will need to take either one of the variable actions as the leading while the rest are the accompanying variable actions for most critical case the leading variable actions will be the actions that giving the highest magnitude of load also in the table here there are two terms here persistence and transient design situations Persistence design situations is referring to the normal applications while transient design considerations are for the temporary conditions which is normally refers to during excavations or repair Next is the serviceability limit state which is used to represent the situations of the functioning of the structures or structural elements under the normal use it is meant for the comfort of the people and also for the appearance of the structures 
the factor of safety for the submissivity limit state will be taken as 1.0 for both permanent and variable actions. Just now we mentioned about the leading and accompanying variable actions. From the table here, the two variable actions make no difference in terms of the factors of safety. However, based on the rationale that it is quite rare for all the variable actions appear at their maximum conditions at the same time. Therefore, the analysis will be based on the rationale that one of the variable actions is at its maximum conditions, while the rest of the variable actions are not at their maximum magnitude. With that, there will be factor of safety to be multiplied with the accompanying variable actions as listed in the table here. This comes to the concept of the combinations of the actions. You know that the permanent and variable actions which can occur in different combinations. Since the variable actions by nature is not constant throughout the service life of the structure, it can be there and it can be not there, as demonstrated by the fluctuations of the curve here, where the y-axis represents the magnitude of the variable actions while the x-axis here represents the time of the structure. As they can appear in different combinations, all combinations need to be considered in order to determine the most critical design situations for a structure. For example, the self-weight of the structure may be considered in combinations with the weight of the furniture with or without the effects of the wing. With that, this leads to different types of the design considerations of the load combinations, which is termed as the combinations frequent and quasi-permanent. The combinations is referring to the ultimate limit state and also in reversible service limit state. For example, in reversible cracking, due to the temporary but not excessive overloading of the structure. The factor of safety to be multiplied with the accompanying variable will be psi naught, as given in the table here in accordance to different categories of the variable actions. As for the frequent, it is referring to the ultimate limit state, particularly for the accidental actions and also reversible service limit state. For example, the actions that cause the cracking and deflections in the short durations. The relevant factor of safety will be psi 1 as given in the table here. You will see the factor here is normally smaller than the combinations. And lastly, the quasi-permanent actions. It is referring to the variable actions which is almost permanent over time. For example, the snow on the roof of the building at high altitude which the snow may be there for over weeks and months. The factors will be psi 2 as given here. This figure shows an illustration of the magnitude of the combined actions. The most conservative value will be the characteristic value of QK which is meant to represent 95% of the probability of the occurrence. In another word, if you adopt this value, 
you have at least 95% of confidence level that your design is adequate. As you can see from here, the area below this line, which is the combination value, is relatively large in comparison to the area here. Assuming the area below the curve represents the probability, the chances of all the variable actions reaching their characteristic value is quite low in comparison to the others. For a more economical design, you may use the combined value for all the accompanying variables while the characteristic value for the leading variable actions. The frequent value is meant for the accidental applications and the quasi-permanent value is meant for the variable actions is nearly always there. Now let us come to discuss the applications of the accompanying variable factors. Consider this as a design value. The permanent actions will be the GK times the factor of safety of the GK, which can be obtained from the table here. Next, there will be leading variable actions which is QK to be multiplied with the factor of safety of the QK. This is referring to the table here. There will be only one leading variable among the list of the variable actions. The rest of the variable actions will be considered accompanying variable actions. There will be summations of the accompanying variable actions, which is QK multiplied with the factor of safety for the accompanying variable actions, which is referring to the table here, and multiplied with the reduction factor due to the combinations of the design situations, as referring to the table here. Next, we explain how to adopt these equations. Take an example for only two variable actions, which is QK1 and QK2. The GK needs to be multiplied with the partial factor of safety of the permanent actions. And all the QK is to be multiplied with the partial factor of safety of the variable actions. There will be two loop combinations. First, you take one as the leading variable while the remaining as the accompanying variable. There will be a reduction factor for the accompanying variable actions. Next, you change the leading variable actions to the second variable actions while the first variable actions now is considered as the accompanying variable actions. Which means the role of leading and accompanying swap among themselves. Among the two combinations, you will need to choose the more critical situations for the analysis of the structure. In the case that you have more than two variable actions, for example, you have QK1, QK2, and QK3, you will have to test the leading variable actions individually for different type of QK, while the remainings are considered as the accompanying variable actions which is to be multiplied with the reduction factor psi and among these three combinations, you will choose the most critical conditions. This slide shows the common design value of the actions at the ultimate limit state. 
For example, for the routine design comprising the permanent actions, variable actions, and also wing actions. We know that these two are considered the variable actions. Then, geolog combinations will have at least four. The first loop combinations will be between the permanent actions and variable actions, omitting the effects of the wing action. With that, the wing actions is not considered. And second combinations will be between the GK and the wing actions, omitting the variable actions. In this case, the variable actions is considered not appear. Next, there will be two loop cases, which you first consider the variable actions as the leading variable actions, and then you consider the wing actions as the leading variable actions. With that, the accompanying variable actions is to be multiplied with the reduction factor psi and the accompanying variable action here is to be multiplied with the reduction factor psi also. From the analysis here, you will need to find the most critical loop case. As for the design for the serviceability limit state, all the partial factor of safety for the variable actions is considered equals to 1.0. That means this equation is still applicable except you have the partial factor of safety for the variable actions and permanent actions equals to 1.0. So for the combination value, it will be the summations of GK plus the leading variable plus the remaining variable which is multiplied with the reduction factor. As for the frequent value, it will be the summations of the permanent actions plus the leading variables to be multiplied with the factors for the frequent case while the remaining accompanying variables to be multiplied with the factor psi for the quasi-permanent. If you design for the quasi-permanent value, the design value will be equals to the summations of the permanent actions and the summations of the variable actions to be multiplied with the reduction factor due to the quasi-permanent. With that, this concludes the applications of partial factor of safety for the actions under both ultimate limit state and also serviceability limit state.